afternoon good evening everyone from wherever you are if today is your first time coming to kind greek simplified classroom you are welcome please like us give us thumbs up comment subscribe and share it stay tuned with us on lesson four which includes introduction to parts of speech and may i introduce to you the professor dr godson ebuja thank you for tuning in uh, thank you very much uh lady ij Ohabunwa, our anchor person thank you for the good job you are doing to ensure that uh, the Koine Greek Simplified is moving forward. As our usual custom is, it's imperative we bear in mind that this Koine Greek is mainly for ministers, seminarians, which we help in biblical exegesis, hermeneutics, and as well as homiletics for ministers and any other person that may be interested. The last time we discussed uh, the transliteration, today we are looking at the introduction to parts of speech. But before we go fully into the parts of speech, I want to introduce us to something that is called passing. Each word in a sentence has a role to play accordingly. The words are classified into various groups. This Groups are called parts of speech. Such parts of speech are the verb, the noun, the adjective, the conjunction, the affecto, the pronoun, and the others. Each of these is governed by its own set of rules and principles. Therefore, when we look at the word person, it has to do with grammatically recognizing a word with one of these groups as mentioned above. Secondly, passing is also used to carefully analyzing a word by pointing its unique features. For instance, in passing a word like akao, You are expected to tell the speech, you are expected to tell the number, and you are expected to tell the person that is involved. For instance, this is Akao. You will agree with me if you are acquainted with Greek language, the Koine Greek precisely, that Akao is present active indicative is a verb and with reference to the number here it is first person singular so that is how person works analyzing a particular word if it is a noun for instance a word like alpha gamma gamma epsilon lambda omicron sigma you will agree with me that having introduced you to transliterations, having introduced you to the alphabets, you will be able to pronounce this word. But when it comes to passing this word, as far as it is a noun, which is one of the answers to the person, it is a noun, that is the part of speech. Now you will tell me the number, you will tell me the gender, and you also tell me the case. Therefore, when passing a verb, when passing a verb, you tell us the part of speech. One. Number two. When passing a verb, you tell us the person. Whether it is first person, second person, third person, then when passing a verb, you will also tell us the number. Whether it is first person singular, first person plural, 
That is what passing a verb entails. So when passing a noun, when it comes to a noun, you will also tell us the part of speech, which is a noun. You will also tell us the case, tell us the gender, and number four, you tell us the number. So as we progress, you will come to terms with what I am talking about here. It will become clearer as we progress. The verb. You may ask a question. Why am I beginning with the verb among all the parts of speech? Of all the parts of speech, we begin this study with the verb because of the vital role verb plays in a sentence. Looking at it, you will agree with me that the verb is the foundation upon which the other parts of the sentence revolve. Therefore, any sentence without a verb can never be considered a complete sentence and sometimes does not even make any meaning whatsoever. That is why we are beginning with the verb. In Greek, we have only one present tense. Unlike in English, where we have Present simple. That is where you will write something like, I write. Present continuous. That is where you write something like, I am writing. Then, the third one, you have present emphatic. That is where you write something like, I do write. However, as I said earlier on, there is no such distinction in Greek because in Greek there is only one present tense which covers the whole of English present tense. Both present emphatic, present continuous, present simple, they all have one form in Greek that represents them. Furthermore, in present-day English, there is no distinction between the second person singular and second person plural. However, in Greek, there is a visible distinction between the se second person singular and the second person plural. As we push forward, you will come to terms with all what I'm talking about. Present active indicative verb. The idea of present tense in Greek is that the action is going on, it is continuous or repeated. In Greek, we have voice. This voice means that a verb is active. That is the voice. So when the subject is performing the action, so the, the verb has an active voice when the subject is performing the action. Secondly, the verb has a passive voice when the action is being performed on the subject. Mood. As far as Koine Greek is concerned, there are several moods of verb. One, we are starting with the indicative mood. That was why I announced 
the present active indicative. Re remember this. Active voice. Active voice. Indicative mood. And the verb present tense. That is why we are beginning with the present active indicative verbs. Now, in Greek, there is another thing I want us to bear in mind called the stem and the endings. Stem and endings. Every Greek verb and every Greek noun basically are composed of two parts. The part which remains solid and basically unchanged, probably throughout all moods and voices, is called the stem. Whereas the part which is appended to the stem and varies according to the voice and mood is called the ending. I will now present us the endings of the present active indicative verb. The endings of the present active indicative verb. Present active Indicative verbs. Pay necessary attention. Listen to me now. First person. Singular. Plural. The first person singular ending in Greek looks like is the omega, the plural, omen, the second person, is the plural, ete, the third person, is a the plural osi and sometimes we add what we consider the movable noun therefore these are the endings of the present active indicative Verge. Greetings, wherever you are watching us, learning with us, and discussing with us on Koine Greek Simplified. As a continuation of the lesson number four, I want to bring a digital format, or in other words, a PowerPoint presentation of what we've done so that we will get a clearer picture of uh, what we're talking about. Pass of speech, passing the verb, present active indicative. Each word in a sentence has a role to play accordingly. The words are classified into various groups. These groups are called pass of speech. Such pass of speech, are the verb, the noun, the adjective, the conjunction, the article, the pronoun, etc. Each of these is governed by its own set of rules and principles. Passing, this is a process of grammatically recognizing a word with one of these groups as mentioned above. And secondly, carefully analyzing a word by pointing its unique features. For instance, 
And passing the word like akao, which means I hear, one is expected to tell the part of speech, the number and person that are involved, if it's a verb. While angelos, which is a translated angel, you get a part of speech, the number, gender, and case of the noun they are identifying. The verb of all the parts of speech, we begin our study with the verb because of the vital role it plays in a sentence. The verb is the foundation upon which the other parts of the sentence revolve. Now, a critical look at the whole scenario will tell us that in English, we have what we may consider three presents, three presents, one present simple, where you, will, you may say, I write, two present continuous, where you may say, I am writing, three present emphatic, where you may say, I do write. However, in Greek, such distinction does not exist. There is only one present tense, which covers the whole of the English present tense. Present active indicative. The idea of present tense in Greek is that the action is going on. It is continuous or repeated. While I was using the whiteboard to talk or to teach, I said something about a voice. We say that a verb has an active voice when the subject is performing the action. Secondly, a verb has a passive voice when the subject is receiving the action. For instance, we are losing, we are eating, they are dancing, etc. So as we go on, we will come across other possible voices like middle and passive. Just as I mentioned passive, there's also a middle voice. As we proceed, we'll get into that. Mood. There are several moods of verb in Greek, but we are starting with the indicative mood. And the indicative mood is a mood of making statement and asking question. There are other moods. So as we progress, you will learn about them. Stem and ending. At the chalk, with the chalkboard, we talked about the fact that every Greek verb and the noun are basically composed of two parts. The part which remains solid and basically unchanged through all moods, voices, etc., is the stem. The part which is appended to the stem and varies according to voice, mood, etc., is called the ending. Let me now introduce us to the endings of the present active indicative verbs. Bear this in mind. If you are interested in biblical interpretation, exegesis, and subsequent the application of the Bible, it is imperative you memorize these endings, study, apply it, do your exegesis properly, and present a great sermon for the conversion of souls of men. Therefore, the endings of the present active indicative verbs are, look at it, the first person singular, omega, the first person plural, omen, second person singular, ace, second person plural, ete, third person singular, a, then third person plural, oc, sometimes it goes with movable noon. The movable nu is placed to the ending of this third person plural verb when the word following it is a, starts with a vowel. So the nu separates the vowel of OC. Here, there's this iota and the following vowel. So that's primarily the function of the movable nu. That is why it's movable. So it could be there, it could not be there. But it doesn't cost you anything to put it there perpetually. It doesn't cost you anything to put it there perpetually. 
because you fail a test when it is there, it's supposed to be there and you did not pull it. But you will not fail a test when, even if it is not supposed to be there and you put it, you will not fail. Therefore, put it always. Make it part of you to put it always. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day ahead. Ensure that you follow us step by step. We have the lesson number one, number two, number three, and this is number four. So we are doing step by step so that you will know the rules, the principles that guide the understanding of the Koine Greek in order that you'll be able to apply it to your biblical interpretation. God bless you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for listening. Thank you for learning. Please ask your questions, your replies on the comment section. Do not forget to comment, share it, like it, notify us, give us thumbs up. See you on the next class. Do you know how to find us? Yeah. Go to Dr. Godson, Abuja, and Gospels Classroom Varieties. There, you learn your Greek. Thank you so much.